But yeah, I am starting to become more and more convinced that caster lock is just uh, kind of horrible in this current meta. Yo, what's up chefs? Hope you're having a good time in the dungeons today. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing some PvP slash general highlights from my stream yesterday after I swapped from trying to desperately make a caster lock setup work in solos to a hybrid bonk build with arcane shield plus spell memory, mainly for ignite at first. And then ultimately I was able to roll rage from my barbarian and just went a straight melee build with rage and arcane shield. I'll have a brief section at the end of the video where I talk about the current state of caster lock slash casters in general in solos, which is my favorite style of warlock to play. But without further ado, let's hop into the gameplay. Hope you guys enjoy the video. This guy just got obliterated. <gasps> oh my God, that Fucking jump scared me. Let's go. <sighs> Hopefully no one already hit the crates in here. No. Holy shit.
Alright, this ended up being a good run. We'll take it. Even with no boss. Yeah, it ended up being pretty good. Let's see. I also hit 130 now, so I've actually got another learning token to spend. Uh, yeah, this only lasts four seconds. Yeah, screw it. I'm just going to pull from Barb and see if I pull uh, Rage. Eh, I'm just going to go for Rage, though. Wowzers. I got it. Let's go. Okay, well, at some point, I have to try this build. I mean, this build seems so insane. Rage plus Arcane Shield. <sighs> 183 HP. Yeah, 321 move speed like I thought. These actually seem not bad. I'm gonna take these. Yup. Oh man, this build feels so OP. Rage plus Arcane Shield just feels disgusting. And here, let me. Oh my goodness. This is a movie right here. I'm watching a movie. Oh, I'm about to have to go. I'm about to have to get involved, I think. This is already like a three kill lobby or like a three kill game. Like I could turn this into a crazy game. Are they both back down? I don't know what the hell just happened. Those people, I mean, like, they just both dipped or something. Appreciate it, TK. See you in a bit, Bursky. I should still be streaming. Oh, no. This guy messed up. I don't think he wants to take this fight. Yeah, I didn't think you wanted to take that fight, bro. Um... Oh, shit. Someone pulling up on me.
No, man, he got the door closed. Let's go, bro. I'm frying this lobby. That's five kills. I'll let this guy live. But, uh, yeah, I've never actually tried it on high roller. Um, Honestly, just mainly because I don't really have, like, a trio stack to play with for the most part. Alright, let's see about selling some of this stuff real quick. These are actually some pretty good Lightfoots. Oops. Lightfoot. Add X. 550, I'll do 500. Actually, fizz damage is a magic power. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this should go for like more than a bunch of these, but I'm just gonna undercut so it sells. I'm gonna go 300. This is a nice heater, I'm not gonna lie. Heater, armor, fizz damage reduction. It's a double rolled heater. It's actually got a lot of fizz damage reduction as well compared to most of these other ones. I'm just gonna put up for 300 though. Then three Advis Fox Pendant. This probably won't sell for that much, I'm gonna be honest. Oops. Actually, might have not even been worth picking up, I don't know. Actually, not too bad. Let's do a big undercut again there. It's gonna feel <laughs> kinda feel bad selling this to the merchant, but that's probably where it's gotta go. Alrighty. Oh, I'm almost top 100. Damn, top 100 is entirely demigods right now. That's crazy. Just to quickly touch on the caster lock part that I mentioned in the intro. Yes, I've tried a bunch of different builds at this point. Some of them on stream and most of them off stream. Probably the main ones to highlight were when I was running Torture Mastery, Vamp, Overhealing, and Robust or Torture Mastery, Vamp, Overhealing, and Advanced Healer. But the better gear you're wearing, the better it's going to be to swap Advanced Healer for Robust from my experience, because the flat 5 healing becomes less valuable the more magical healing you're getting from your kit, whereas on the flip side, the 15% max health from Robust gets more valuable as you get more flat HP from your kit. Long story short though, from my experience, it still kind of sucks compared to the melee builds that people are running in this multi-class atmosphere, and I think a number of caster players are feeling this way in solos. Since I don't want to tangent for too long, I'll just say that I think the issue mainly stems from the fact that almost every melee build that people are running right now allows them to get to the MS cap of 330 by utilizing either sprint, rage, or a combination of both for really heavy builds. They're also typically taking some sort of damage enhancing perks such as Slayer, Axe Spec, Rapier Mastery, etc. which makes them hit ludicrously hard. A lot of people think that reducing the MS cap to 330 for some reason was a nerf to Sprint or Rage, but it's actually the opposite because what it really did is just made it that much easier for melee builds to reach the MS cap with their weapons in their hands or with heavier armor than before because prior to the MS cap reduction, and multi-classing being added, most melee builds were not reaching the MS cap with their weapons out and would have to stow their weapons to get to the cap of 350. But now, rogues, barbs, fighters, bards, and even clerics are all hitting the MS cap with their weapons out, making it nearly impossible to outmaneuver them slash find time to actually cast any spells during a fight. Essentially, this makes Phantomize feel like a rather useless spell at this point, because prior to the changes, Phantomize could certainly get a light armor caster with a minus 10 move speed spellbook to the 350 MS cap, whereas melee builds with anywhere from minus 25 to minus 50 MS from their weapons and heavier armor on top of that were almost never hitting the 350 MS cap with their weapons out, 
meaning they would at the very least have to be skillful about stowing their weapons at the right time and pulling them back out again at the right time to actually get on top of you and dish out some melee damage. And last but not least, take it easy chefs.